<clears throat> Hi, this is Mrs. Zhu, and we're working on homework number 12. It is a worksheet that looks like this. In the video today, I will not be uh, working um, on this part of the homework tonight with you, but try it yourself. Um, do your very best to answer question four and five, and make sure that you write a little sentence or two under the in the box that says, today I learned. Okay, really we're going to be focusing on um, the questions are in the book from page 394, numbers 12 through 19. I will do the first two questions for you to help you get started. And um, here's question number 12. The question actually uh, gives you an equation. And the equation is y equals 4x minus 5. Now I'm going to set up this chart and it's really going to help take me step by step through the process of finding my solution. So I'm looking for solutions. The solutions will look like ordered pairs um, with two numbers in a parenthesis. So just like this. This would be the um, general setup, the skeleton. Okay, and the question gives me an equation and it also says in the question that I'm going to find the solutions of each of the equations for x that is equal to negative 2, 1, and 4. That means my x, which is here in the chart, um, it's going to be negative 2, and it's also going to be 1, and it's also going to be 4. So those are the three numbers that they already assigned in the question for you to find the solution to. So that just means that um, because they already give you the x's, then you're just going to plug it into the equation and find the y. <coughs> so here I'm going to plug that in. Then the red parts that I've labeled here are already the parts that are coming from the textbook, and that's where I'm getting those numbers. So then I'm going to plug in the number negative 2 for my x in my equation. So I'm going to get y is equal to 4 times negative 2 minus 5. I'm going to follow PEMDAS here. Multiply 4 negative 2, which is negative 8. Subtract 5, giving me um, negative 8 minus 5, which is negative 13. So I'm going to be getting negative 13. Um, when negative 2 is plugged in for into the equation for x. And that's my first solution, so I'm going to write that in blue. My first solution is negative 2 comma negative 13, and I need to put that in a parentheses. And the reason I put it in a parentheses is because it tells me that this pair of numbers is one of the solutions that works for my equation. Um, and the solutions just represents, if I were to actually graph it on a graph, then those are dots in my, on my line, just like we've been doing in class. So then I would do the same thing with 1. I would plug 1 into the equation. y is equal to 4 times 1 minus 5. And I would work that out with PEMDAS. 4 times 1 is 4 minus the 5. 4 minus 5 is going to give me negative 1. So my second solution, when I plug in 1 for x, the y pair with it is negative 1. So that's my second solution for this question. So I'm looking for three solutions, each of them having negative 2, 1, and the last number is 4. So I'm going to plug that number in. y is equal to 4 times 4 minus 5. 4 times 4 is 16. Minus 5 gives me 11. So I'm going to put 11 over here. So my third solution is 4 comma 11. These three are my answers and my solutions right here. Okay, so just setting this up this way, I've already been able to find all my answers. And then I do that for the next question, number 13. So here's question number 13. Um, I start with x on the left. Make my, um, this is kind of a very long t chart. So there's a t over here, a t over here, and another t over here. So there's three t's. Okay, so I can call it my three t chart. Okay, to help me find solution, the three t. And here's my equation here, that the equation gives me y is equal to negative 2x. And the negative, and the x's that I've been given is negative 2, 1, and 4. Here, the color green is representing what is already given from the book. And from here, I'm just going to plug each of those numbers in. I'm going to plug in negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2 times negative 2. And that would give me negative times a negative as a positive 4. And my first solution would give me negative 2, comma, 4. The second solution 
will be y is equal to negative 2 times 1. And yes, I could probably do that in my head, which is negative 2. But I'm just going to show work here to help me kind of keep my information organized. So my second solution is 1 comma negative 2. And remember, it's the x and the y. These are the pair of numbers that creates my solution. And the last part, y is equal to negative 2 times 4, which is very good, negative 8. And my last solution to this question is 4 comma negative 8. And these would be my three solutions to the question number 13. And throughout the whole way there, you can keep going. Uh, I think 18 and 19 might get a little bit more difficult, but as you do number 18 and 19, just keep in mind that when you multiply with the fractions there, that you can just uh, multiply fractions. And your answer can be in a fraction. Uh, and you will have fractions when you um, get your solutions. So try your very best on the last two uh, questions of tonight in the textbook because of the fractions, they may be a little bit more difficult. You know, I decided that I think we, I do need to help you with number 18, and then you can tr try number 19 by yourself. But here I created my 3T chart, 3T chart. So here's the first T, the second T, and the third T. And my equation that they gave me is Y is equal to 1 fourth times X plus 6. Okay, so I'm going to start with, um, we have three numbers that they gave me, negative 2. 1 and 4. I'm going to plug all those numbers in. I have y is equal to 1 fourth times negative 2. And I'm going to change each of these numbers into fractions, negative 2 over 1. <clears throat> and I'm going to change it into fractions because, you know, when I multiply fractions, that's going to be a little easier for me. And then I'm going to add 6 afterwards. Okay, so 1 fourth times negative 2 over 1 is going to give me negative 2 over 4 plus 6, negative 2 over 4. I'm going to simplify these two fraction, this fraction here, giving me negative half plus 6. Negative half plus 6 is really the same thing as 6 minus half. I'm just kind of um, reversing it. Here I'm actually using the property of commutative property, where I'm switching the numbers around. And this is going to help make it a little easier, because 6 minus half gives me 5 and a half. Okay, which is going to be my first solution. My first solution is negative 2 and 5 and a half. And I can leave it as a mixed number. If you choose to not use a mixed number, that's totally fine too. And you want to use improper, then your improper answer would be um, negative 2 and 11 over 2. That's totally fine as well. Number, and then when we plug in 1, we plug that in. Y is equal to 1 fourth times 1 plus 6. 1 fourth times 1, that's pretty easy because anything times 1, it's really itself. So 1 fourth plus 6, and we can just add that up, and that's just 6 and 1 fourth. So I'm not going to choose to do a, an improper number. I'm just going to leave it like that. 1 and 6 and 1 fourth would be my second ordered pair, my second solution. And my last solution, y is equal to 1 fourth times 4. I'm going to make that into a fraction over 1, and then add <clears throat> 6 afterwards. So I'm going to do this part right here first. 4 and 4 times 4 is really 4 over 4, which is really the same as 1. So I'm really doing um, a simple addition of 1 plus 6. So 1 plus 6 is 7. So really, the fractions weren't too bad. So 4 comma 7. So now I have my three solutions here. And if I do go a little bit fast, please feel free to pause it, rewind it as you need to. And we'll see you in class tomorrow, and I've done more than um, enough questions to help you with it. And so, see you tomorrow.